So I'm doing a brief history of JavaScript. Um, it's really just the story of JavaScript and us, because let's face it, JavaScript is probably the most accessible language on the planet. Uh, it may not be the most interacted with, that's probably C and C++, but you don't need a compiler for JavaScript. You just need a web browser and a text editor and you can start programming, uh, which makes it extremely, extremely uh, accessible. Now, this was 1994. Does anybody recognize this logo? Mosaic, yes. This was, um, this was a public uh, project um, called Mosaic that uh, was our first graphical interface to the web. Before that, we had Lynx, which was a text-based interface, but then they created this Mosaic project, which was, which was pretty cool, and some people said, you know what, I think we can make money off this. And they left the project and they created the first version in 1995 of Netscape Navigator. Now, Netscape Navigator, um, when it came out with version 2.0, was uh, working with Sun to bring in this language called Java, where you could run little applications in the browser. But the problem with that was that in 1995, we didn't have web developers. What we had were webmasters, and what webmasters were really just people who managed servers in a closet somewhere, and everybody had their own web server, and they had their own ISDN lines coming in. They weren't programmers, and so the idea of bringing down a Java compiler and creating applets and working with that ended up being really daunting. And people creating Netscape said, you know, we need to create a language that's easier, that they can embed in their page. So this man, um, Brandon Ike, created JavaScript in 10 days. Now, 10 days sounds like a cool thing, except for the fact that um, all the bugs that were created in those 10 days still exist today. Bad decisions that were made back then. Um, the fact that they weren't able to really uh, get it uh, tested because as soon as it came out, people started writing code against it and they needed to make sure that it was still, um, it would still work with deployed code. And they didn't want to break the web even in 1995. So um, the, the stuff that created in those got created in 10 days um, was kind of set in stone. It's a bit of a fish tale. I, I, I don't personally believe it was actually 10 days. Um, but it did open the door for dynamic HTML. And this allowed us to create blink tags with JavaScript. Um, it also allowed us to do something that uh, was important, and that is uh, client-side form validation. Um, and so people started really using it a lot. And people actually started creating like little calculators and things like that that were, um, were, that were kind of cool. Uh, little games with dragging layers around the page, things like that. So in 1996, all the companies that had kind of created a version of JavaScript got together and said, we need to standardize this. And they created the ECMA 262 committee. Um, and ECMA is a standard, standardization body that created the CD-ROM, C-sharp, OpenOffice XML, and ECMAScript. And they divorced the JavaScript branding from the language, and the, so they just called it ECMAScript. It's the only thing they actually put their name on. Um, but So if you ever hear ECMAScript, it's really JavaScript. JavaScript is an implementation of ECMAScript. And so within a year, they, uh, they finalized ECMAScript 1. And it was really nothing more than what JavaScript already did. Document what you do and then build upon it. And a year later, they had ECMAScript 2. And a year later, they had ECMAScript 3. They were on a roll. They were adding features and implementing features. It was moving really quickly. And then they went to lunch. <laughs> it wouldn't be another 10 years until we would get a very small update to the language. Because in 2000, the bubble burst, the tech bubble burst. Uh, we got, uh, we had September 11th, investor confidence went down, and the web kind of died in many ways. There were some people, um, uh, top economists saying that, that the web would not, was not a viable um, uh, commerce mechanism whatsoever, and that it would stay in the world of academia, academia forever. And so all of the people that had started doing web development were very sad. It was. Uh, <laughs> It was the dark days of the internet, um, also known as the MySpace years. <laughs> and not much happened for a few years until 2004 when Google created this thing in the back here called Google Suggest, where you would start typing some things and all of a sudden, as you're typing, you would see some suggestions. I mean, we know, we take it for granted now, we call it autocomplete. Um, but it changed everything because who remembers when that happened? It was awesome. And then they blew us away 
with Gmail and Google Maps, um, which at the time you had MapQuest and every single, every single click would be a different um, page reload. And so they created the first single page application. 2006, we got the um, abstraction that is known as jQuery. And it's been six years since the last update. What happened? ES4 fell apart. It was way too big. Everybody was fighting. Nobody wanted to break the web. And nothing happened. It died. It blew up on the launch pad. It was over. And they had to pick up the pieces. And that's when Brandon Knight, the creator of JavaScript, said, we're going to create this thing called Harmony, a plan to go forward. Some people were frustrated with the JavaScript that was being written. So um, Douglas Crockford wrote this book, which ended up changing the way we would write JavaScript forever. Rolling back a little bit, we had uh, Google Chrome that came out in 2007. Um, and at the time, we were all thinking, do we really need another browser? And the answer was yes, because they produced V8, which was the JavaScript engine that was fast. And they showed everybody that you really can make fast JavaScript. And so all this new JavaScript that we're writing was executable, which caused all the browsers to follow suit and get faster. Uh, it was a great thing. Finally, in 2009, 10 years later, um, they, we got a modest update to the spec. That's the same year that we got Node, which took the V8 engine and put everything on the back end. Now you have JavaScript everywhere, which brings us to today, where really the big thing that we're working on is like single page frameworks, front, front, um, front side frameworks, running JavaScript everywhere, server, back end, workflow management, and everything. And we're going to get what was supposed to be in uh, ECMAScript 4, most of the things are actually, um, the, the standard is finalized and should, I'm sorry, is finished and should be finalized within the month. And we should be going soon. So, a um, whole bunch of features coming up. After that, they're going to have small updates yearly. So, we'll get ES7, ES8. And in 2019, Blade Runner will happen. Thank you.